Hello friends, in this video we will study about warm temperate eastern margin climate. This type of climate occurs on the eastern coast of continents in the subtropical regions. Under the Köppen scheme of classification, it is represented by alphabets C, F, A, where C stands for mid-latitude type of climate and F for wet type of climate and A for warm summer type of climate. This type of climate has many regional variations and based on regional variations it is classified in, into different types. For example, we have natal type in the southern hemisphere, China type in the southeast China region and Gulf type in the South East American region. So the China type has somewhat well pronounced dry season whereas the Gulf in the Gulf type the dry season is very short and in the natal type there is no dry season and all these regions occur within 20 to 35 degrees north and south of the equator. Coming to climatic conditions, here the temperature, mean monthly temperature is between 4 to 25 degrees Celsius and the climate is very moderate because of the maritime influence. And during extreme cold break events like in the polar vortex, they might be frost. Frost is nothing but frozen soil. And this is very uncommon or less frequent in this particular type of climatic regions. Coming to precipitation, here the precipitation is 60 to aver and average annual precipitation is about 60 to 150 centimeters. It is quite low compared to the tropical humid type of climatic regions where the precipitation is about 200 to 250 centimeters. And this particular region supports a wide range of crops because of the favorable conditions like the uniform distribution of rainfall throughout the year and the rainfall is the quantum of rainfall is more or less sufficient for most of the crops and in winters the rainfall occurs in the form of dep depressions brought by the jet streams they are called as frontal cyclones and during the transitional months like the months between summer and winter we have tropical cyclones where they are called as typhoons in the china region that is in the northern pacific and we have hurricanes in the atlantic region and also typhoons in the southern pacific and most of the rainfall in this particular region occurs due to anti-cyclonic cells we'll see that and coming to the regional variations there is one important characteristic which is similar or different to all these types of climates for example there is gulf and china type of climate where there is a monsoonal variation of the climatic conditions. We know that monsoons are seasonal reversal of winds. So China type sees this particular kind of variation hence it is called as temperate monsoonal type of climate. So in summer the winds blow in this particular path and during winter the winds are reversed. And this is partially true in the gulf type of climate and hence it is called as slight monsoonal type of climate whereas this particular monsoonal characteristic is totally absent in the natal type of climate. So in the summer months that is in July when it is summer in the northern hemisphere we can see the location of high pressure belts. So these high pressure belts are important in bringing rainfall to the regions of eastern maritime climatic regions. For example here the high pressure cell has strong divergence and the divergence occurs on the oceans. So this wind which is subsiding has to move horizontally over the oceanic region as a result it carries good amount of moisture and this moisture enters the continental regions as a result there is good amount of rainfall in the southeastern USA. Likewise it happens in the China as well but here there is a strong low pressure which is established in the Tibetan region as a result they, naturally there is inflow of winds in the form of southwest monsoons as well as northeast monsoons. So we know that these trade winds meet at the intertropical convergence zone and also these winds coming from both the sides carry good amount of moisture as a result there is copious rainfall in the China region during summer months. Whereas in the southern hemisphere during July it is winter as a result we can see the subtropical high pressure belt is present exactly over the region and we know that subtropical high pressure belt when it is present exactly over the region there is strong divergence and this it discourages, it discourages any cloud formation and hence there is no sufficient rainfall. But we can see these particular regions come under the influence of westerlies and westerlies sometimes bring occasional depressions in the form of frontal cyclones. So the winter rains are due to 
western I mean frontal cyclones whereas the summer rains are due to the trade winds onshore trade winds so if we take the month of january we have winter in the northern hemisphere and we have strong high pressure cells over the tibetan region and parts of atlantic ocean as well as central parts of america so we can see strong divergence discourages rainfall but occasional rainfall occurs in the form of frontal cyclones so we know that frontal cyclones are strong in the winter seasons but this particular region as it falls in the subtropics the intensity of trop uh, mean temperate cyclones or frontal cyclones is com comparatively low so in the month of january we can see the high pressure cells in the southern hemisphere so high pressure cells bring winds into the region bringing good amount of rainfall in the eastern parts of these continents so this is the climate graph we know that during summer the rainfall is good whereas in winter the rainfall is comparatively lower and this particular type has lo local variations as well for example in durban we can see the rainfall is good in this summer months and in winter it is low whereas in tokyo which is under the influence of mainly um, under the influence of oceans has comparatively better amount of better rainfall throughout well distributed well throughout the year coming to natural vegetation we know that one favorable condition is the uniform distribution of rainfall throughout the year as a result it supports luxuriant vegetation in the lowlands usually the trees are evergreen with broad leaves example oaks and certain deciduous trees and in the highlands the trees are conifers like pines and cypresses so here there is both availability of both hardwood as well as softwood so evergreen broad leaf forests have hardwood whereas the conifers have are softwood trees so here the lumbering industry is comparatively more lucrative compared to the other regions of humid tropical climates where there is only hardwood we know that hardwood has a lot of disadvantages because it is heavy and it doesn't float readily in water also I mean on the surface of water and also hardwood trees don't occur in pure stands as a result lumbering is not quite lucrative as in the taiga region but this particular region has both softwood as well as hardwood so it can be utilized in both ways so timber industry is particularly lucrative in parts of china and japan where we have oak and camphor trees so we know that evergreen oaks are part of our most important characteristic of mediterranean climate such oak trees are also occur occur in the regions of eastern margin climatic regions and in brazil paraguay and argentina we have parana pine and quebracho which quebracho is called as axe breaker because it is a very strong hardwood and in eastern australia all these trees are replaced by eucalyptus forests so in the eastern parts of australia this particular forest of eucalyptus is very common but these eucaly eucalyptus forests have been replaced with pastures where there are cattle or livestock industry so the forests are replaced by livestock industry in the gulf states that is in the parts of usa there occurs lowland deciduous forests we know that deciduous forests are the ones which shed they lives in the short dry season so here the dry season is very short so here more or less the deciduous trees are not the deciduous nature of trees is not well pronounced coming to the major economic activities especially agricultural activities this particular region is very favorable for agriculture because of uniform distribution of rainfall throughout the year hence most of the economy of this particular regions is highly dependent on agriculture in the southeastern china rice is the chief crop we know that china is the leading producer of rice and most of the rice is domestically con consumed not much is left for exports other than that tea is another important uh, cash crop in this particular region and sericulture is very important occupation and the influence of sericulture is declining mainly because of uh, the replacement of traditional clothes with western clothes and in southeastern usa there is widespread cultivation of corn wheat and other crops like cash crops like cotton and tobacco so this particular region is very famous for cotton and tobacco and we have sugarcane in the natal and south african region that is parts of natal region of south uh, africa and in south america there is coffee maize and dairying so dairying occurs mostly in the grassland regions we'll see that tobacco is in very important crop of eastern usa this occurs 
in regions where there is warm climate and good amount of rainfall this is the native crop of america so it is usually introduced first in the american region and later it went to various other parts of the world in india usually andhra pradesh and surrounding regions have good tobacco cultivation so virginia to tobacco is very famous somewhere in this part and it requires warm and well drained soils these particular soils are available in the eastern parts of usa and we know that here the maritime influence is high because of the winds blowing in because of the onshore winds and hence it receives good amount of rainfall and usa produces more than half of the world's tobacco production and most of it is exported to the international market one more very important crop in the region is corn corn is used for feeding animals they are not it is not used much for human consumption but it is very it is used as fodder material for fattening of cattle and pigs we know that we have prairies in this particular region prairies are an example for steppy kind of grasslands so here lot of pastures are available for the cattle rearing industry or livestock industry along with that we have corn belt which is very close to this particular region and the corn belt the states in the corn belt region are have very huge ranching facilities as a result both the corn as well as prairie grasslands help in very good livestock industry most of the corn is used for fattening of cat and pig, cattle and pigs and the pigs which are ranched pigs and cattle which are ranched in this particular region are transported transported to the slaughter houses in the chicago region so here they are slaughtered and packed they are converted into beef and they are exported to various parts of the world through st lawrence waterway which is present between canada and usa so the beef here is called as corn beef it is not because of the corn belt corn crop it is because of the treatment of meat with large grain rock salt which is called as corns and hence the name corn beef and this beef is exported to mostly europe and various other neighboring regions so other advantages are ease of cultivation and prolific yield so corn it gives good amount of yield and also it has good amount of starch content as a result it is both beneficial in terms of the carbohydrate content as well as ease of cultivation we know that the regions of usa are very flat especially the prairie regions and these parts which are under the influence of gulf type of climate usually initially the corn belt was somewhere to the southeast but now it has shifted towards the northwest because of the market especially the beef industry cotton is another important crop and it doesn't occur in the southern parts of usa and parts of florida because of high rainfall usually high rainfall discourages cotton growth as cotton threads or what we call as cotton tinge lint it doesn't uh, it get destroyed due to severe rains and hence it is discouraged in this particular region whereas it grows or the cotton crop is cultivated in other parts in the neighboring parts where the rainfall is moderate so there are various conditions which help in cotton production for example we have long growing season which is very important for cotton it it needs at least 6 months to give an first yield and at least 200 days are frost free and the temperature is moderately high and all these conditions are very favorable for cotton cultivation and the most important region is the mississippi flood plains we can see this is somewhere here mississippi river and this region is called as mississippi flood plains along with that we have atlantic coastline coastlands all these regions are very important cotton producers and in regions where the rainfall is comparatively higher in such a place the cotton doesn't grow well or it is it get destroyed during rains and hence here various other farm produce like citrus fruits and cane sugar are grown and the most challenging factor is the pest called boll weevil which destroys cotton belt and due to this kind of pest which is rampant in especially in the very humid regions this has led to westward migration of cotton belt towards the interiors of southern states coming to the southern hemisphere here the crops are cane sugar and cotton in the natal region and tobacco is also grown and maize is the very important crop both for food as well as animal fodder and in the south american region where the rainfall is below 120 cm we usually have grasslands where grasslands are transitional zones between pampas and 
the equatorial rainforest regions and these particular grasslands are used for livestock industry so these natural pastures provide very valuable forage for both cattle as well as sheep so this particular region thrives in livestock industry and when the rainfall is greater than 120 centimeters in such a case forests replace grasses and here the lumbering industry is very prosperous for example parapa Parana pine is very important for lumbering industry in this particular region and in the Australian region we know that we have eucalyptus trees which are also very valuable hardwood trees. And in the New South Wales that is the parts of Australian region the eucalyptus forests are replaced by pastures where the livestock industry is very thriving and here most of the Australia's uh, cattle, cattle produce is produced so milk, meat etc is exported to various parts of the world. So this is all about 